Shalom, shalom, greetings to you all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are, it's a blessed day that the Lord has granted us and He wants to go to a higher level as we grow in the knowledge of Him. We cannot stay in one place. We cannot stay in one place. Why? Because whatever that is characterized with, with life, it will always grow. Growth is a natural uh, is a natural thing when there's life life causes growth there's no growth there's no life when there's life there's growth so it's natural we cannot stop growing until unless there's no life so we are growing in the lord because god himself is life the bible says that i'm the way the truth and life jesus christ saying that is life and we have to understand indeed that he's the life we're looking for is the life that is being predicted it's actually the meaning of life even the word life can be fulfilled in the lord jesus christ when you talk about life we talk about jesus and that is it glory to god forever but now i want you to understand this all right or oh, i want you to get this glory 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 when we study you know you know there's so much that we can say about joy you say the bible says in psalms in isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 i will greatly rejoice in the lord my soul will exult in my god for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation he has covered me with the robe of righteousness bridegroom takes himself with a garland and uh, as a bride adorns herself with her jewel. So he's talking about why he is going to be or is going to rejoice. Okay, why he is going to rejoice. But I want to focus on Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 says the Lord your God is in the midst of, of you a mighty one a savior who saves he will rejoice over you who with joy he will rest in silence satisfaction and his love in and in his love he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them we exalt over you with singing glory to God forevermore now oh jesus so this is one uh, also one of the verses that reveals you know the character and the nature of god as a happy god and this is repeated over and over again in different places we find these scriptures of the verses you know that are revealing the same thing only that people when reading the scriptures they do not read what is written they read what is in their mind and that is so sad that they don't see what is there they see what is in their minds so what they take home is what they have already they don't learn something new um but when you want to learn something new you have to understand that learning is also an art there's an art of learning and many do not know how to learn 
learning is so important? Well, for instance, um, mo- most of the things we've got to learn today, uh, or we are learning, the issue might not be the new things you're going to learn. The issue might be the things you have to unlearn. Mostly, we find ourselves carrying certain things in ourselves which are not helping us, which are not even important, which needs to go, which we need to let go. Okay, and they have to go. And we have to let these things go because they're not going to help us, they're not going to build us, they don't strengthen us, they don't build us, they don't empower us. Okay, and it's so, it's so, and so the learning when you unlearn or let go certain things, you are creating space for the new things to get in. So the issue is many times how we unlearn. That's important. Now, number two, we have to also understand that uh, if we want to benefit from what we are learning, you know, the willingness to learn and the willingness to accept change, the willingness to learn and the willingness to accept change is so crucial because this determines whether you get it or you not get it. Okay? Now, in this verse, the Bible says, The Lord your God, okay? You know, I like to also put some context here. And many times the context is just the previous verses and you just understand the whole context. Um, Okay, verse 14. Let me begin with verse 14. You know, from verse 14 says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice, be in high spirits, and glory with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem, in that day. Well, again, there's a time we talked about in that day when the prophets were talking about in that day as if there's a certain day okay that is specific which has been you know uh, revealed and described here well, in this first chapter 14 it says sing O daughter of zion child of israel rejoice being in high spirits and glory glory with all your heart O daughter of jerusalem in that day in that day okay so what am I saying? What we see here is that in that day, in that day, is a prophetic word, especially when it's been mentioned in the Old Testament. The prophets talked about that day, the day of the Lord. Okay, and even in the New Testament, you find this now clearly described as the day of the Lord. And that was the day he resurrected on. Okay, so... But that was more than a day beyond 24 hours. It's not just saying it's a day which is composed of, you know, 24 hours. No, this is a day that goes beyond 24 hours. And this day that goes beyond 24 hours is that very day which was uh, prophesied, you know, about in years, years back so this prophet Zephaniah now he says single door of Zion now remember the word Zion Zion represented the mountain in Israel but also represented the place a place a realm where the children of God will be or where we stand as believers where we are today as those who believe the church the saints okay shout O Israel rejoice be in high spirits and glory with all your heart O daughter of Jerusalem in that day thank you Lord so he's talking about in that day in verse 15 for them for then it will be that the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. So there's this judgment that is taken away. The judgment is taken away. Taken away the judgment against you. Now he's saying in that day the judgment will be taken away. Well, again, these are prophets. They're prophesying about things who come. You have already seen that the judgment will be taken away. And he's actually putting in plural. He says the judgments. For then it will be that the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. 
there is no judgment against the person who is in Zion. There is no judgment to those who are in what? In Zion. And this has to be clearly understood. And that's where we are right now as we speak. There's no judgment against you. But this means what to you now? This should mean something. If there's no judgment upon you, there's a purpose. There's a reason why there's no judgment upon you. So that now you say, oh, there's no judgment. It doesn't matter what I do. No, it's not. It doesn't matter what I do. Is now there's no judgment. What am I? I am free to live up to the purpose and standards and the callings of God and fulfill the purpose of my existence and the reason why I'm here. And this is what I should focus on, okay? That's why there's no judgment because the person judged who is judging himself of judged, you know, you can do much. You are in prison, okay? So this is why for then it will be that the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cast out your enemy. He has cast out your enemy. So your enemy are cast out. Why? That is to say they are separated from you. They are away from you. They are far away from you. They are not close to you. They are not close to you. Your enemies are taken away. And this is what he's saying. In that day, your enemies shall be taken away. The king of Israel, even the Lord himself, is the is in the midst of you. Is in the midst of you. In other words, is in you. Glory to God. And after he has come to you, you shall not experience of fear evil anymore. Glory to Jesus forevermore. You shall not fear anything anymore. You shall not. Because he has come to you. See, the reason why we fear today is because probably we don't know that he has come to us. The Bible says that Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. This is, we have, this is our victory. This is the victory that we believe in. This is the victory. And the victory is that, you know, we believe in his name, that Christ is in us. The victory is our faith. And our faith is that we believe that Christ is in us. And so it's so important to understand that he's saying in that day, everything will change. Imagine where I buy. It says, you shall not experience or fear evil anymore. Is this real? And he's calling upon the daughter of Zion. I, <laughs> I, my, my. So the possibility of not experiencing evil or fear is right here. The possibility is present here. Mm -hmm. The possibility. Is present here. You see what I mean? He says, Ye shall not experience evil anymore. Why can't you rejoice? And by the way, this is revealed in rejoicing. In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem represents the new Jerusalem, which is the church, according to the Bible. Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands sink down or be slow and listless. The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one, a savior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. You will rest in silence, satisfaction, and in his love. See, God rests in silence and in satisfaction. But guess what? And in his love. You know what God rests in? He rests in his love. You know, love is to cause rest. Love should not cause trouble. The reason why there is unrest, the love is not there. Love is so important. He rejoice over you. Okay? He rests in his love. He will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them because he's resting. This is the new day. This is the church. He will exalt over you with singing. Brothers and sisters, it's our call. There is, everything is doing to the daughter of Zion. We are daughters of Zion. Because daughter represents the church. That's where we are. And we have all reasons to rejoice and victory is ours. Glory to God forevermore. Glory to God. Shalom. Shalom.